Assalamualaikum. I'm Dr. Abdul Basit Malik. Today's topic is a little bit detailed and it is very necessary to understand where the disease starts. Our body is composed of mostly, commonly, three or four tissues. One is a nervous tissue, the nerves, brain and nerves, muscles which are striated, smooth, cardiac muscles, bones and epithelial, endothelial cells and glandular tissues where there are kidneys, liver, stomach and gastrointestinal system. So, the problem of metabolism or metabolic ill health is the root cause of so many other problems like type 2 diabetes, hypertension, stroke, dementia, Alzheimer and these problems are because of many factors including a bad diet, a poor lifestyle, a sedentary way of living, no exercise, no gym and eating junk and things like that. But we have to understand two things. One is to become obese and to have subcutaneous and central fat and the other is to be obese and metabolically ill too. So there are people who are obese, they, are, they have more weight, they have um, fats under their skin but metabolically they are okay, they are good. So they are not suffering from any kind of problem or any kind of a disease. Similarly, there are people who are physically very fit, they look very perfect, they are tall, they are skinny, they look normal, but metabolically they are ill. There is sickness in their cells and they accumulate fat within their belly, central fat, and they get cardiovascular diseases, they get sudden heart attacks, they get type 2 diabetes and they may get stroke. So what is the difference between these two and what is uh, the the actual thing which is the root cause of these problems that is something at the cellular level or a subcellular level. When I say cellular level it means the disease or the problems or a group of problems are at the level of cells or within the cell. Subcellular means inside the cell. So at the subcellular level there are almost eight problems or issues which are causing this metabolic syndrome or metabolic ill health. The cells of the body, the cells of the liver, the cells of the glands, the cells of the muscles, all the cells, they are sick. They are not working properly. So what kind of problems are there? within the cells. So first of all, there are almost eight problems. The first one is subcellular inflammation, that is the inflammation within the cell. And it is caused by either chronic fevers, autoinflammation, toxins which may be coming from food or petrochemicals, they are coming from uh, pollutions within the air, industrial pollutions and 
Then there is number two is glycation. Glycation is where there is attachment of glucose or fructose, the carbohydrates, either with proteins or with lipids. And this attachment is without the action of any enzyme. That's why it is called glycation. If it is acted with enzymes, it is called glycolation. So glycation is something which is not needed, which is not required. But when it happens and it involves the proteins, it causes Millard phenomena. It causes aging. It causes problems in different structures of the cell. Similarly, they are the reason glycation is the reason of type 2 diabetes and its complications. Then is the oxidative stress. When there is energy is being consumed in the Reb cycle and energy is being produced through different molecules, glucose, fructose, pyruvic acid, ketones or other, there is formation of oxidative reactive species which need to be removed from the cell. If they are not removed properly or well in time, our antioxidants are not available, then there will be cellular dysfunction. And fourth is mitochondrial dysfunction. Now mitochondria is something which is working properly our metabolic health is very good. It is consuming all the energy. It is consuming all the glucose. It is consuming everything we eat. When it is not working properly, our basal metabolic rate becomes down. Our body temperature becomes down. So, on an average, people with metabolic ill health will be having around 97 degrees of Fahrenheit instead of 98.6 or 99. So, they are towards the lower limits of normal and this is all because of mitochondrial dysfunction. Then is the insulin resistance. The cells they are supposed to respond insulin hormone to take glucose from the blood into the cells. When the receptors on the cells they do not respond properly this is called insulin resistance. Now insulin levels go high but the response of the cells towards insulin is not good. And then is the sixth is membrane instability. All the cells are having a membrane, an outer structure which is encircling all the cells. And this is mainly composed of lipids and cholesterols. When this membrane is, it should be stable. When it is stable, the things are going in and out in an order, at a rate, at a rhythm, at a requirement. When it is instable, then the influx and outflux from the cell is not appropriate, is not proper and it becomes like a disease, it becomes a sickness. So at a certain temperature, the, the membrane should be stable. When at a certain physiological temperature, it is not stable, it will allow many things to go in and out. And this occurs in Alzheimer's disease. Then comes methylation. Methylation is a phenomena which is needed in gametogenesis, it is needed in uh, DNA formation, it is needed in the regulation of DNA or the genes. And when this is not properly happening, it will cause uh, so many other issues, it will cause malformation of certain proteins, it will cause malformation of certain substances more or less and they will manifest with different diseases. Then is then comes finally autophagy. Autophagy is a phenomena where within the cell, cell is eating unnecessary things, it is detoxicating itself, it is digesting itself and causing problems if if autophagy is not problem uh, is not proper there are problems coming on coming on and this is leading towards metabolic ill health in autophagy um, the ribosomes they are functioning in a certain way they are digesting things they are disinfecting things are the substances which are not needed 
which are not required either they are coming externally or internally produced and um, unnecessary substances they are re-regulated and the proteins if they are unnecessary they are discarded or reused in the block formation so when autophagy is not in order there will be accumulation of unnecessary substances within the cell and this will cause so many problems so in metabolic ill health basically the cell itself is suffering from all these eight phenomena now these eight phenomena are these eight problems out of these eight there are four which can be fixed with exercise they can be treated only by doing exercise and the those problems are mitochondrial dysfunction insulin resistance autophagy and inflammation so inflammation is not something which cannot be regulated with with the exercise exercise can fix these four but if we take care of uh, the whole uh, foods and take care of our eating habits we can fix all the problems all the eight and what we have to do avoid junk food avoid table sugars avoid uh, all the baking bakery products avoid all processed ultra processed substances and foods and to tail towards the real food the organic food the whole food so just by limiting ourselves from these junks sugars alcohol we can fix this metabolic syndrome metabolic ill health and when we start doing exercise we can reverse the whole picture so proper diet which is less carbs or slow carbs or low carbs natural carbs complex carbs where we are taking carbohydrates from uh, vegetables green vegetables some of the fruits we are taking a lot of proteins we are taking a lot of fat so that our body is metabolically using other compounds other than uh, glucose we are using ketones uh, in the shape of nutritional ketosis that will fix metabolic syndrome that will fix metabolic ill health and at the same time so we need to do different exercises even uh, just walking is good for health it uh, regulates stress it regulates inflammation decreases inflammation just doing some aerobics is good just doing some tabata is good so at least three to five times a week some exercise and decreased amount of carbohydrates and spacing between the meals one is not going to eat all the time we are supposed to eat two or three times not more than two times if you do one meal in a day that is perfect oh man is perfect but if you like you can do two meals and there should be a space of seven to eight hours ten hours twelve hours and that's cool so if you like the video thank you very much for joining please subscribe my channel share it to other people so that this know how this knowledge can be spread it to our friends and families and to the people who are suffering from these issues thank you very much